Transcending 1999 to 2012, a series of videos eternally retold. Soul Caliber Month. Hello and welcome to Soul Caliber Month. This Soul Caliber video is going to be about Soul Caliber 2, and it's going to be completely unscripted because I'm going to be looking at the Weapon Master mode. And and I don't know if you saw last week's video, but I said you, you know normally when I'm making a video, this is where I talk about the story, but Soul Caliber story is in my text. I realize that's a bit of a problem because Weapon Master mode, well, pretty awesome, you know, you play through it and you have some little challenges, you earn money so you can buy all the stuff. It, it, it has a story, but I've never read it. I don't think anyone's read it. So that's what I'm going to do. I am going to do something completely selfless, do my least favorite thing in the world, and I'm going to read so that you can know the story of Weapon Master. However, as I mentioned, it's behind text. What do I do? I realized halfway through it's like, oh, oh crap, I, how am I going to show this to people? Then I realized, well, I, I'm, I'm a little artistic, not super good at drawing, but artistic enough that I drew up 100 art assets and I'm going to animate, you know, I'm going to go halfway between uh, this really cruddy animation and uh, anything that there's actual visible, visual representations for, like, like the fights and stuff. Uh, and, and I was thinking, okay, so how am I going to animate this? A billion keyframes? And then I realized, I, if you watch the uh, YouTuber Circle Tunes, I really enjoy his stuff, and I think his uh, animation's kind of funny. If you don't know what it is, Circle Tunes HD. Uh, that's how I'm going to animate. I have a hundred uh, uh, art assets. I can put them all in Photoshop, and I can just kind of drag it along. That's how I'm going to do. However, I'm not as funny or talented. And I'm not going to be doing it the same way that Circle Tunes does, so it's not going to have any of the charm, but at least you'll have a visual representation for what I'm talking about. Alright, so I'm going to be uh, record recording the all entire screen for this, because uh, I, I have no clue on how on earth uh, the Circle Tunes actually records his screen with, with a camera, because like it, he has to be a machamp. He's doing zooms and all sorts of crazy stuff. I, I, I definitely don't have the talent for that, so. This is me, the main character. I, I played as Charade. This is Heeman Gaiman, without an M, as you see. But if it's gonna be a representation of me, I've got to give him a mustache. Let's go ahead and merge those layers. So anyway, the story of Soul Calibur, or, or uh, the Weapon Master, is they tell it through this type of uh, video thing. Uh, but it goes by really fast. It says, oh yeah, so people know about the Soul Edge. That's basically what they say. There's a, They say there's this really spicy sword called Soul Edge. And your character is one of the many who wants it. So he, he's going, he's like, he heard there was a very good training camp. So he's walking over and he decides to go to it. And then, boom, boom. When he comes to it, there's this guy. His name is Edgar. And he says, hey, you gotta leave the training camp. And he's like, but, but I really want to learn how to do it. And he's like, well, fight me. And so we actually do end up fighting. We go back and forth a couple of rounds, and it's like, all right, you have resolve, you some promise. C come with, come with me. I'll, I'll learn you. I'll learn you how to. Tr tr oh no! Okay, so now I can actually show you on screen what happened. So we, so he has the training, and I, keep in mind the first time I played this was on the GameCube, and I think it is so mean. So first he says. Okay, so you need to learn how to do a horizontal slash. Hit A. So, boom, you hit the A button, horizontal slash, everything's great. And then this is where it gets a little tricky for the GameCube players. He says, all right, now hit B. So you go, and you hit B. And you block. And he's like, yeah, come on, come on, vertical slash, B. B, B, and, and you're not doing a vertical slash. And you use B, 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 B. Eventually, you might get upset, and you throw the controller. Somehow, the Y button gets hit. And then he says, all right, now we'll learn how to kick. Press the K button. <laughs> ah, man, it, it was really annoying the first time I ever played Soul Calibur. So anyway, I complete my training and then uh, the Edgar, he takes me and we're, 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 we're walking. We walk for about a day. So he turns to me, he turns to me and he says, you know, a lot of people, don't, they don't even finish the training for this program. A lot of them learn the basics, and you know, they, they know how to fight, and then he 
quit and become thieves or bandits. It, it really sucks, man. And while we're talking about that, he's like, "Well, well, well, what do we have? It looks like it looks like we had some thieves." And, and, he, and he and he says, "He's like, hey, Chad, when was the last time that you had a chance to just go wild?" And I'm, I'm like, oh, I, 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 Cabo, two thousand one. Oh, you meant fighting? I, I don't know. Last week, he's like, "Well, well, here's a chance. Go, go ahead and just beat the crap out of these bandits." So uh, we go, we go, and it's just it's it's three fights. You heal a little after each fight. It's really easy. I don't think they put up any. Sort of fight, you just get to beat the crap out of them, knock them out, throw their bodies. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so it finally came to graduation day. The way, the way that you graduate from this training program is you go and you find another student. Right here we have Minerva. Minerva was the student, and she actually says, I've been watching you as you've been going through it. This will be a good fight. Let have none of us hold back. And, and so, boom, boom, we start... We start fighting, it's, it's, it's all good, everything's great. But eventually, I do defeat Minerva. And after, after it, she's like, oh, that was a, that was a pretty good fight. Hey, I heard you're looking for Soul Edge. And my guy's like, whoa, who's is this Soul Edge? Who's, who's saying anything about Soul Edge? But, but she's like, oh, that's okay. Uh, you know, I'm looking for Soul Edge too. So I guess we're rivals. I'll go ahead and I'll try to finish the t uh, class tomorrow. So you can have your head start. You're going to need it. And so I'm about I'm about to go on. And then Miss Rugi, or sorry, Edgar says, whoa, hold on. You're looking for Soul Edge? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, if you're going to do that, you're going to want to go to B... 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 Bazinga, but oh, oh. you're gonna want to go to Bandersnatch. So my guy, he heads up, he heads up to Bandersnatch. You know, you, you gotta find people who'll be able to hear something for sure in that city. Unfortunately, while he's walking, he runs into this big rushing river, and there's 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 no obvious way for me to get across. So, so you know, he, he follows the river, you know, and eventually, eventually, he sees a boat. And he's like, okay, well, boom, I'll be able to take the boat, I'll be able to ride Any, any, Anyway, when I hop into the boat, this guy comes up and is like, that's my boat! You take my boat, it's gonna cost all the money you have! And my, my guy's like, this, this, this guy doesn't own this boat, he's, he's obviously just a, a thug, a ruffian, a scoundrel! And so, for this, I, uh, I, I just gotta land 20 hits in 20 seconds, I, I actually failed the first time. Seriously, after 20 seconds, well, I didn't beat the sense into him soon enough, I said, okay, you take my money, take my money. So boom, I, I beat the ruffian off, and then I ride across on the boat. And so after that, I'm going, I'm going, and I run to a fishing village. And when I get there, I see that there, there's like some, there's like something going on on some scaffolding over here. There, there's some guys fighting, pa 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 pa, pa 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 pa, and the crowd, oh, we love the fighting on scaffolding, it's great. And then, and then this guy, boom, he, he get, he gets knocked off. And so I walk over, you know, see what all the hubbub's about. And before I even know what's going on, the villager actually forces me up. Onto the scaffolding, like, well, I guess this is what I'm doing with my day now. And so we start fighting. This is actually one of my favorite challenges. It's it's very interesting. The wind is pushing you while you fight. However, it's also the easiest challenging. I I, I didn't even have to throw a punch. The the wind the wind. I just made sure that Young Sung was facing the the fall off part, and I wasn't. And so then I won. And you see, I thought I thought the village would be really pissed with me because I, I I killed their person, but they they you know they knew that I was from a different town. It's like, yeah, you did good. You went in fought that really well. And the village elder came out and he said, "You fought that really well, Sonny. Could you do us a favor?" And I'm like, "Oh, well, what's the favor?" You well, you see, we're a fishing village, but there's like there's like these miners that live up the uh, the river, and they went and they poisoned the river. There's a, could you go to the mine and then ask them to maybe you know stop doing this? And I'm like, okay, man. So I go I go to the mines and I fight through three battles. It's a it's a relatively simple thing. You get to learn how navigation through dungeons work, and it's a, it's a it's a good introduction. But anyway, go through, beat one, two, and then there's Yoshimitsu. We go, boom, I beat him. And then when I'm going on my way, I'm about to get jumped by the miners. But then Yoshimitsu says, nope, we lost fair and square. Are you here you on behalf of the villagers, no? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, you know, they're doing unfair things to us. So how about we have a feast? And then we go to the feast with the village elder, and the villagers are there, the miners are there, everything's great. And I work as the mediator, and we work all the problems out, and then I head on my way to Bandersnatch. So I finally make it to Bandersnatch, and it's a it's a big bustling city. I didn't draw any bustling or anything, but I see this big bustling city. You know, I go I go to the amphitheater, and then I hear screams from the amphitheater, like, "Whoa, what is this?" And there's like some mad puppets going crazy, and we, we were we were both uh, charade. And so, so the, the puppets going crazy, just causing a scene. And I'm like, "Well, I'll save you all." And then the puppeteer's like, "Whoa, hold on, hey, that that puppet it, it, it cost a lot of money. Could you?" 
Could you maybe not destroy it? I'm like, oh, how am I gonna destroy it? I'm like, gotta stop it, but you know, I'm gonna destroy it. Gotta Cost them a lot of money. And so I decide, I decide that the best way to do this is to ring out, ring out the, the, the puppet. And I, I just want to point out, this is kind of stupid. Because look, 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 look you, you can't even see the bottom of the screen here. I mean, I mean, it, it's, it's good. Beat your phone in an unconventional way. But, but seriously, how is just punching it or kicking it, you know, four or five times, you know, performing a throw on it, Less damaging than throwing it off a pit that you can't even see the bottom of. I go boom, you know, knock it off, and it's like ah! And then I say, what can I say except you're welcome? And I go on to the next. So I go back to Banner Snatch, and I'm asking around, anybody know about Soul Edge? And then, and then while I was doing that, look, oh look who I ran into! It's Minerva, and she's like, hey, long time no see. Any news on Soul Edge yet? I'm like, well, no, not yet. And she's like, hey, yeah, nah, me neither. Hey, you know what? It's been a while. How about we have a duel for old times' sake? And then we go, we go to the arena. I don't know if there were any special qualifications, but yeah, me and Minerva fought. It was good to see her again. Uh, it actually, I think it only serves story purposes of saying Minerva's a returning character, so... But, you know, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I liked it. I liked the it added to the story. So, after winning the battle with Minerva, I go I go to stopping an inn, because I am pooped. So I come in, it's like, yes, yeah, a hot meal and a room for the night. It's like, okay, I'll be happy to help you. Oh, but you know, every room comes with some complimentary continental chloroform. And I'm like, well, don't mind if I do. So I drink it up. <laughs> And my character's like, well, oh, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. And then he and passes out. Oh, so I wake up, and I'm like, ugh, no. I, am I on a pirate ship again? Gosh dang it! Don't I realize that I'm on the, on the pirate ship? At least I'm like, well, at least I remember my training. They took my sword away, but, but, boom. I go, and I just use my shoulder to, boom, knock this pirate. Yee-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Boop, boop, in the corner. And so then, boom, I go, and get my sword, and then I head off. And then, and then when I get to, up onto the... The ship deck, there are some pirates, and I need to fight them all off. But since I had that chloroform, I'm still a little woozy, so every single hit, I actually got a little stunned and fell to the ground. It was an interesting fight. It was a little annoying because it was five fights. The biggest problem with playing with Charade is if you have to go through five fights, if you end up getting a sword style that you're not very good with, i.e. Maxi or Ivy's stupid weapons, then you end up losing and you have to redo the whole thing over again. But once I did get lucky and received five weapons that I could use, and I won. Well, after that, I leave Bandersnatch. I wasn't really able to find anything out about Soul Calibur, but when I'm, when I'm going, I run into this guy. His name's Hob, and he's like, Well, I heard that you were looking for Soul Calibur. Well, I work for a man who's also looking for Soul Calibur. His name's Farl, and he's great, and he's awesome. However, you're, you're looking for Soul Calibur for yourself, aren't you? That's a bit of a problem. And then, and then Vera, or Hobbs, he pulls out a bomb, and I'm like, what you doing with that? He's like, well, I'm going to kill you with it. And then we go into this awesome fight. Now, I, I think it's kind of cool. You play basically hot uh, potato for 20 seconds. When that timer hits zero, bomb explodes. Whoever had it last dies. So, so he's just beating the ever loving crap out of me. I, I can't get off me. But finally, like last second, I get up, swing my axe, like, you drop this, and then boom. He dies. So the next area I enter is the forest. See, see, see how I put trees in. So anyway, in this in this whole area, I need to get to the end because there's there's a gate at the end. They put a bunch of gates to keep people from getting soul edge. You shouldn't have it because it's a really powerful, really, really spicy blade. So I'm walking through this forest and then, oh no! I found myself in a bit of a trap, a bandit's trap, because there's so many bandits in this game. Fortunately, I'm able to struggle free. Uh, but after that, I'm, like, really exhausted, so I run away, because the bandits will probably find that I triggered their trap. Okay, so I ran through the forest, and eventually I found a windmill. I'm like, oh, that'd be a good place to hide. Literally, like, the only structure in the forest. They'll never find me here. So I, so I run in, I run up, and I get to the top. So while I'm waiting, recovering my strength, because I used it all to escape from the trap, well, look who's coming. It's some bandits. Oh, oh, where could, where could he be? Could he be in there? So they come in, they come in. And I decide the only way to get them is with a, a, a surprise star. Which is weird because it says in the story that you need to surprise them and that's, how, and that's how you catch them off guard. But really, it's just you're fighting two people, but you start with really low strength. But after you after you knock someone out, you, you get some back. So it's not too hard. It was, it, was, it was a fun enough challenge. So after the windmill, I head up to a monastery because, you know, I, I've heard about a monastery. I get there and, there, and there's some monks. And we're talking, we're having a good time. When I told them I thought I was going through the Grand Gate, and this was not the good idea. This, this made them. Uh, no, let, let's. Uh, where, where's the black? 
Oh, this made screw it. This made them angry. And they're like, "Oh, the gate! You must be a bad guy." And they actually told the youngest monk, "Like, go get all the other monks." We he sprang, he ran off. He's like, "Well, yeah, we're gonna fight him." Anyway, for this fight, you have 30 seconds to defeat the person. But but every win gets you 15 more seconds. This is because you think you can take the five monks here, but not an entire monster. That's that's just a bit too much for you. So they all come in. You're you're fighting them off. You're wrestling them off. And it's a lot of fun. Once again, it's a problem. I'm fighting five people with charade. You're going against uh, Ivy, and you got to use Ivy's sword. I, I, I have no clue how to use her. So I beat the monks, and then I'm walking, and then I hear, Aah! I hear an old man scream. So I, so I run into a mansion. I'm like, what's going on here? So, oh, these, these ruffians, they, they stole my awesome sword. It's like, hey, I screw you, old man. And so for this fight, I went and I fought, uh, I believe it's Mitsurugi and Raphael. And it was a relatively easy fight because it said they will be using vertical attacks. So sidestep, smack, 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 sidestep, smack, smack, smack. So after the battle, boom, I gave the sword back to the guy, but I don't think I actually did because it said that I unlocked some weapons, so I'm assuming it actually was the awesome weapon. And so anyway, I'm asking, so uh, well, I want to go through the gate. Do you, do you know how to get through the gate? He's like, oh, the gate? Yeah, that is, that's, uh, she's, it's defended by my good friend Lena. She only lets people with a good heart through, but you you help me get my sword back, even though you still have it. So you're, you're a good guy. She'll, she'll be sure to let you in. So anyway, I make my way to the gate, and then, and then there's Leanna, like he said. He's like, hey, what do you want with my gate? And I'm like, oh, I'm just looking for the Soul Soul Edge, and I, I heard it's, it's through the gate. Can, 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 I, can I go get that? And she's like, Soul Edge? Whoa, whoa, whoa. People looking for an evil sword are, are usually evil, so I don't think so. Of course, I do see some resolve in your <laughs> eyes. Okay, if you can show that you have resolve, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, go, go through the underground dungeon. And so I, I, I go through the dungeon. And this is actually a really cool dungeon. I like this one because, well, first off, it has all the female characters in it. And second off, it has uh, booby traps. Like, um, uh, there's a, the quicksand room, there, there's fire on the edges, and, and then there's also, you're fighting Talon on the ice. And when I fought Talon, I was given Valdo, and Valdo just has one of the most powerful knockbacks. So even though I think Talon defended it, just, I smacked her, and BOOM! SEE YA! So I... I get through and then I fight Leanna and I'm like, okay, I went through your challenge. Can I, can I go through the gate now? And she says, mm, no. And so I, I, le I leave disappointed. So I go and I leave all disappointed. It's like, oh man, I couldn't have Soul Edge. But while I'm leaving, there's also a guy and he goes and he walks past me. He, it said he had a giant sword, but I didn't bother drawing it. And so anyway, while I'm walking past him, I'm like, hold on a second. Wait, that guy had a giant sword. I better go check that out. So I walk up and, uh, wow, uh, the gate is just cut in half, and oh look, that's, that's Lena, and I'm like, oh, Lena, what, uh, what happened here? And it's like, this, this isn't good, he, he broke through the gate, uh, please go, go, go tell the, the priest of Altier what happened, am I, okay. So I finally make it to the priest, I run up, and I'm like, ah, ah, priest, priest of Altier, and he's like, yes, what is it? And it's like, oh, Lena, she, 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 she got hurt, and the gate, the gate got torn open, and he's like, oh. I, I explain the situation, he's like, okay, okay, so if you're gonna stop the guy who wants a soul edge, you know what you're gonna need, you're gonna need soul caliber, just let me go down to the altar and see if I can get that for you. Ah! And then all of a sudden, one of me pops out. It's an exact clone, except this I didn't draw bother drawing the mustache. So I have to fight an exact clone of myself, which I, which I think is pretty cool. And then afterwards, I was like, dude, what the heck, the heck was that? I thought you said you were going to get the Soul Calibur. And so I like, had to make sure you're powerful. Can't, can't go ahead and give the Soul Calibur to someone who's just like a, a, a stupid little weakling. But here you go. Now, it's not fully pure. You see that little red part that Chet drew? That It's not a fully pure sword, but it'll definitely... It'll definitely help you in the fight if you if you want to go and you want to get uh, Evangelina or whatever. And I'm like, okay, thanks, dude. So with the Soul Calibur in hand, I find myself in the next area. It's a, it's a graveyard. It was actually a castle, and the castle was destroyed. I'm like, oh no, did Varel do this? But not. And then I realized, you know, it's probably just, just castles get destroyed. It's the, it's the age of gunpowder. And then so while I'm walking into the graveyard, all of a sudden. <laughs> Uh, it, it was the Gravekeeper. He did not want me in this sacred place. So he goes and he starts start trying to kill me. And this was a tough fight. Like, I, 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 I didn't fail even once. But look at this. Every time I hit him, it hardly did any damage. He had a huge health bar. It didn't even knock him off the cliff. But it was a possible fight. So I stop at a place for the night. I have a good time. And then I go heading on my way. And before I do, some guy warns me. He's like, 
Oh, you better watch out! There's somebody in these parts that's attacking passerby! Not passerbyers with an S at the end, just passerbyer! I, I think it might be a sort of a grammatical glitch, but okay, see you later! So I head on my way, and what do you know? It's Arma, played by Song Mina, one of my favorite characters. You see, I unlock her after this. But it was a hard fight! She beat me so many times, seriously. Like, I, I, I don't know why. This might have been the hardest fight. And there's only one of her! But, like, she was the hardest to beat out of all of the people that I've had to fight. But in the fight when I finally did beat her, she was a good girl now. She's like, I won't attack people anymore. You taught me the right way, master. And then she, like, became my disciple. She tells you what happens if you go north or south. So I'm like, so first I went north, and she's like, oh, well, if you go north, there, you know, Vera went that way. And then when I end up going south, she's like, oh, oh, Vera went south, too. Like, which, which, which one won as a woman? So, like I said, I went on up to the north, and then I met this girl, and she's crying. <laughs> and then she notices me, and she's like, Really, Meryl? Really, Meryl? First you come and you kill my master, and then, and then you came to desecrate his grave? Really, Meryl? And I, and I try to explain, but but, but she is, she's not listening to it. She gets her sword and her shield, and I'm like, okay. So I pull out my sword, and then I end up having to fight her. But I don't, I don't want to hurt the poor girl. Like, you know, she's, she's just defending your master's grave. So all I got to do is parry her blow. So first I parry one, and then it takes away like half her health. Boom, I parry the other. And then, you know, since I'm such a cool guy, I just decided to perform a throw on her. Get her, throw her to the ground using Young Sung's throw. Pretty simple battle. Okay, so I finally make it my way to the second gate, and what do you know, Veril hasn't been here yet, but there is someone. It's Bastion, and I, he's like, whoa, 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 where the flip did you get that soul caliber? And I'm like, okay, dude, Lena got hurt, and like, the, the, the priest of uh, Altier gave it to me. I, 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 gotta, I gotta stop Veril. He's like, really? Really, scumbag? I, I don't believe that for a second! You shouldn't have a soul caliber! I want the soul caliber! How dare you! So anyway, he fights me, and it's it's an easier fight, like, you know, simple enough to knock out Yung Sung. Oh, you scumbag. Oh, you better kill me right now. I'm not gonna kill you, dude. I'll kill you later, then. Okay, but, okay, Veril, whatever, the guy you said you were trying to stop. I, like, I think I saw it. Somebody told me about some people going into the caves. So if you were looking for him, go to the caves. And so I head off to the cave. So there's interesting thing about the caves. I have a timer of 200 seconds to go through the whole thing, and I I think that the game makers must have timed this pretty well, because 200 seconds was the exact amount of time it took for me to go through the whole thing, knock out Astroth, and my good buddy Hob again. Oh, I head down south, because I heard that there was a Soul Calibur piece in, in, in down south. So while I'm heading down there, I go through an old prison, and right when I enter, I hear someone from behind me. He's like, so, you're Heeman Gaiman. Sorry about this, but Veril said I could have my freedom if I if I if I killed you. And so then we fought, and this was, this was a kind of interesting fight because there was gunpowder on the walls and on the ground. So the only way you could do substantial damage to your foe was if you could smash them against the wall or on the ground. I mean, I kept getting hit on the ground. I, I don't know any moves that can cons consistently knock someone back unless I'm like Nightmare or, or Raphael's. It took me a few attempts, but I was finally able to beat Maxi. Sorry, no no freedom for you. So I was getting closer to the Soul Edge piece, and then and then I ran into Nerva, and I'm like, hey, what's up, Nerva? And she's like, oh, nothing. I'm just working for Veril now. You know, I might not be able to get the Soul Edge myself, but I do have a plan to get it eventually. But you know, uh, he told me to stop you, so uh, let's fight. And so I fought Minerva. It's just, just a fight against all, you know, easy, easy, easy to buy. Not nothing really special. So I'm making my way to this creepy place. I'm like, well, this has got to be where the piece of Soul Edge is. But then when I get there, it's Veril, and he's like. It all starts with this, the jewel containing the ultimate power. Oh, sorry, punk, but I found the soul, uh, the piece of the soul edge first, so it looks like it's mine. Uh, I'm gonna find the rest of it, but you know, you are seeming to be quite a problem for me. I'll just leave this here. It'd be, it'd be foolish to leave you alive. And then from the ashes, oh, 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 oh dear, that that did not. This does not look good. Decompress. Hold on, let me, let me delete this one. So from the ashes comes Inferno. Well, actually, he's named Inferno in like the arcade mode, but in this thing, they they just like they always put in the lower right hand name like Minerva, Veril, whoever I'm fighting, if they have a story significant name, and they do give this guy a name. It's just an exclamation point. Oh, better watch out for. Hmm. So eventually, I beat. Hmm. But he, I, I don't have the Soul Edge, and I gotta chase Veril again. So I make my way back to the gate, and it's like, oh, look at that! Bastion failed to keep that guy out. You know, he was talking all that smack. But now the gate's open, so I can follow Veril. You like how I did that with the layers? It's pretty cool, huh?
So I'm following Barrel. It's it's not it's not too hard to follow him because like he just destroys cities as he goes. He's he went once he got that soul edge power, he kind of got like fire powers. So I, I come to these guys and it's like, oh man, what's wrong? It's like, oh, we just had a bad time. Oh no, did Veril come through here? Whoa, 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 Veril! You actually know the psychopath who did this to our village? Ooh, ooh! And so then I ended up having to beat up the villagers just because I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Then I, it said that I pulled my sword on them, and <laughs> that didn't help de-escalate the situation. So uh, I beat up some villagers who had lost loved ones that day. And after beating up those villagers, I come to, I come to some reasonable villagers. I drew them green because green's a very reasonable color, and they're and they're like, oh man, that new knight who's in here, he he's ruining everything, man. He's like releasing the prisoners to fight for him, and I'm like, oh yeah, that barrel sucks. And it's like, oh 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 no, here comes some prisoners now. I don't know why I didn't draw any prisoners because I actually have some. But anyway, anyway I, they they say, okay, you can fight the villagers here. You can drink this. I'm like, what is that? And it's like, I, I, it might be poison, honestly. And for some reason, my character does drink it, so it does. It does it does two things. First off, first off, it is poison. I am losing HP throughout the entire fight. However, it does increase my knockback rate. So while I'm fighting this Astroth, just look at this. Boom! Just set it flying. Just killed that guy. So then I leave the city, and there, off in the distance, I see him. Veril. He's going. So I chase him. I chase him. I'm gonna catch up with Okay. So eventually I lose Veril over the hill, and then I end up in this weird room with like a draft coming up from the bottom. And he left behind another one of his servants to try and slow me down and stop me. And the challenge for this particular fight was to hit them while they're up in the air, which which is which is really hard. I mean, there is an updraft, so their descent will be really slow, but I still had a really hard time getting them up in the air. I lost over and over and over until I got switched to Astroth. Astroth had a very easy hit up in the air, hit him dead, and and, and then I won. So after finally defeating Keelik, I catch up with Veril, and he's in the final room before he opens the third gate, and the final monk is defeated. Ugh, yeah, uh, dead monk, dead monk. And then Veril says, Well, 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 Heeman Gaiman, it's appropriate that you would be the final foe I defeat before I ascend to my purpose. Enough talk, let's fight. And the fight is tough. I mean, this is the guy who almost got the entire soul edge. He's got a superpower, and it's his he heals. He he heals marginally during the fights, so um, he, he was not too hard to take down. The final bad guy. What a guy! So after defeating Veril, the priest of Altier came and said, "You are very good at defending the Soul Edge. I, I know it's a lot to ask, but do you think maybe you could defend the Soul Edge for a while? It's, it's going to take a while to rebuild the uh, the, the gates that uh, the Veril destroyed. Do you think you could do that?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, sure. All right. To do that, you're going to need to purify the Soul Edge. I think this guy, his name's Algol. He, he, he'll, he'll be able to help me with that. Go go find Algol. I'm like, okay, thanks." So, so I go out to find Algol. Interestingly enough, Algol is actually the name of the uh, final boss enemy guy in Soul Calibur 4. Yeah, see? Algol actually is a guy. I've never heard of Edgar or Minerva or all of them, but Algol actually is in Soul Calibur mythology or whatever. Okay, so all I knew about where Algol lived was he lived up to the mountains. So I went up into the mountains, and while I was going there, all of a sudden, whoosh! Whoosh! It's an axe! I'm like, what? Is that, a, is that an axe swinging itself? And then I noticed, I, I, I heard a, a highwayman wizard that said, ATTACK HIM MY AXE! And this, this is a cool fight. I mean, I mean, it's a, a ridiculous premise, but for the actual fight, you, it, there's just an axe. It's, it's Astroth, but he doesn't have a body. I, I really liked using uh, throws on him. It was, it was a fun fight, it was a unique fight, but ultimately a very easy fight. So I defeat the axe and throw it aside, and I, I head off, and I, I, I eventually end up in a town. I start asking around, hey, you know Algol, you know Algol? And eventually I do find a guy. He's like, do you know Algol? He's like, I do. I know where Algol is. And you know what? I'd even be willing to tell you. And say, so like, what do you want? Do you, you want to kiss me? He says, is that isn't now how you tell me? He's like, no, no, no. I've got a much better idea. You're, you're a bit of an unknown in this town, but, but it seems if you're looking for Algol, you might be a good fighter. I want you to enter a fighting competition, and I'm going to bet a lot of money on you. And I'm like, okay, okay. finally some good luck, alright. So then I go, and this this fight made me so much bank. Every single hit land, it earns you money. Like, here, here's the thing, the highest I've ever been t paid in any challenge in this game was like, like $4 thousand dollars this was easy easy thirty thousand dollars i've never been paid that much in the weapon master i even came back afterwards so i could buy more swords easy money 
So after me and the gambler make bank, he gave me the location of Al Gold's house, and I went, I went there, and I, I knocked on the doors, and he, he wasn't answering. So finally, I decided, well, I, I, gotta, I gotta find Al Gold. So I started going into his house, and like as soon as I was in the house from behind me, he's like, "Hey, hey, who said you could go in my house?" I'm like, "Oh, Al Gold." I, 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 I need I need to purify the soul caliber. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, come with me. So I pull out the soul caliber and I give it to him. And he, he looks at it and he's like, oh wow, the priests have actually kept it pretty purified, and all things considered. But yeah, but yeah, it, it needs to be fully purified. So uh, are you ready? Ready for what? And then boom, legs, legs pop out of the soul caliber. Hee ha! Hoo hoo! Wah hoo! And so, like, this this is one of the most unique challenges, I think, in the Weapon Master. It wasn't, it wasn't too hard. I mean, it's just a pair of legs. I, 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 fought, I fought fighters with entire bodies. What are legs going to do? Seriously, all I did was down kick. It, 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 it can't defend itself. It, it doesn't have a sword to hit me in the head with. All it can do is just get kicked in the legs. But after I defeat the legs... Oh, I got the sword! Hooray! And it's been purified. So I finally made it to the final land, and they got a little lazy with the storytelling here. So I just go to this area, and then all of a sudden, magically, I'm in an arena. How do, how do I even get in an arena? Well, I don't, I don't know. A whole bunch of fighters step forward, and all I gotta do is fight all of them off. Okay, well, congratulations, did that. And then all of a sudden, that world mysterious to wait into a dungeon. So I gotta fight all the people in the dungeon. But when I finally get to the end of the dungeon, I walk up, and <gasps> it's Minerva. Ha ha ha! Well, Chet, I found a piece of the Soul Edge. Now I'm evil, Minerva! I must defeat you. That's the only way I can get the Soul Edge. So, ba 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 we fight. We fight. And it's Minerva. She, she's not a tough fight. Yeah, I can easily beat Tom. I'll get into a good soldier. I can I can beat Tom. I, I, I think she might have beaten me once, maybe? I, I, I'm not sure. But I did end up finally beating Minerva for like the fifth time or whatever. And then the dungeon disappears. And then slowly, the hellish environment appears. And then, Minerva, you gotta, gotta move you off. You don't, you don't, you're not important for the next fight. But then I hear a voice that says, Guess who found the entire Soul Edge? Fricker! And it, it was Varl! Varl! He's on fire! He's completely possessed by the entire Soul Edge! So I go, and I fight him off, and he, he, actually, I think I beat him on my first try. You know, I have the Soul Cavalry of the Soul Edge. It's a good, it's a good story. So at the very end, uh, there, there's, there's a prologue that says, even though you defeated Varel, uh, you, you won't even be remembered by history. You, you, Varel will be remembered. He, he'll be a side note. You know, he, he's one of the people who wielded it. Uh, Siegfried was there. Seraphontes, he'll be mentioned, but not you. Uh, so, uh, congratulations. Uh, you rolled the dice. You lost. Okay, see you later. So that is Soul Calibur 2's Weapon Master mode. I, I thought the whole thing was a pretty interesting, you know, I, I actually like the story, you know, you're chasing Varl this whole time, you finally get him, you beat him, and then, and then he shows up last second with a soul edge. And Minerva, the reoccurring character, I, I, honestly, the, 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 I, thought, I thought it was a good story. It felt kind of like a play that was being put on by the entire Soul Calibur cast, but, but I, I like the thing, you know, Mitsurugi is Edgar, but yeah. I'm, I'm a little annoyed that I had to read to get the story, but now I know the story, and now so do you. It didn't even have to read. Alright, well I think that pretty much concludes the video. If you disliked the video, be sure to slam that dislike button and unsubscribe, because I'm coming back next week. I'm, I'm going to play Soul Calibur V, and I can guarantee you the story in that is far worse than Weapon Master. It's far worse than my fan fiction I wrote when I was... 13. Gosh, gosh, it's bad.